Okay, the question about gossip and how to deal with it and so on, and is there example at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? One thing comes to my mind. There might, there may be more examples, but the one that comes to my mind is uh, a slander, more of a slander than a, than gossiping. But it it was part and parcel of you know people messing their mouths by spreading this tale. It was slander and gossip at the same time. But the difference I'd like to think is when it comes to a slander, it's definitely something wrong totally unacceptable in the sense that it's it's false it's like an accusation that's now being spread it's a slander and this is why they say backbiting is to speak the truth about someone in a way that if they were there they would have felt bad that is called backbiting backbiting is not to it's not connected to lies it's connected to the truth it's like sometimes you say but sister you're backbiting they say but i'm telling the truth well that exactly is backbiting that's what backbiting is subhanallah so what is, what is it if I'm lying? It's called slander, bohtan, I'm lying. So Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was accused of adultery, of having an affair with Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal radiallahu anha. She was accused by who? The hypocrites, the man known as Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam initially, he kept quiet because obviously for him to clear the wife's name, people would say, oh, that's just because it's his wife. And he let it, he let it, you know, he let time pass by the instruction of Allah. In his case, it was because the categories of people and the lesson to come later on had to be made clear that when slander comes, people fall into certain categories. The first category, those who don't want to hear, they don't want to talk about it, they throw it straight out of the window. That's the first category of people. They're not bothered. It doesn't bother you, throw it out. Second category of people, those whom they heard it in a closed circle, like Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu, his wife told him, did you hear what happened regarding Aisha? So he says, would you ever do that? She says, never. Well, if you wouldn't do it, she definitely didn't do it. So keep quiet, don't talk about it. It's, got, it's, it's actually a lie. So they threw it away after comparing themselves to it. That's the second category of people. And the third were those who spread it. Those who spread the tale. And the fourth category, the one who created the tale. So Allah says at the end of that, every category will achieve a portion of their punishment. May Allah forgive us. The Prophet ﷺ later on cleared it. He clarified it. He read the verses. He went to the people. He told them. He spoke to them. He said whatever he wanted to. In fact, he went to Abdullah ibn Ubay, who was such a dirty man. He was the head of the hypocrites. And the reason why we can say that is because Allah informed Muhammad Sallallahu through revelation and it was well known among the companions and he died in that condition Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul he was known as Ra'sul Munafiqeen the head of the hypocrites all the companions knew this is a troublemaker I'll give you one example he one day the Prophet Sallallahu went to him to clarify something so he was so arrogant he says move away move away the smell of your donkey has harmed me you know, the Prophet ﷺ was riding a donkey. He says, the smell of this donkey has harmed me. So the companions, do you think they would remain silent? You know, you've got powerful people down there. They're not going to be quiet. So one of the companions says, your smell is worse than the sweet scent of this donkey. <laughs> and then a battle ensued, which means some of the people who supported him wanted to attack this guy. And some of these people wanted to attack. But the moral of it is this man was so you know dirty in the way he spoke the prophet sallallahu calmed everyone down he sorted the matter he said look let's get back to the purpose that we are here for and let's try and sort it out let's not be distracted by this sometimes we get distracted so this whole uh, this whole story that i'm mentioning goes to show that the prophet sallallahu did clarify himself himself certain matters and it is definitely a duty of our friends to clear our name on our behalf in our absence and that is a great act of worship i'll give you an example someone says something bad about you and a friend of yours happens to hear it for them to just nod their heads say something you know which hasn't clarified anything sometimes it makes it worse that's not a good friend they are supposed to by right say listen this is wrong it's false it's unacceptable it's not true don't say it don't utter it like sometimes we are taught as Muslimin, Allah says it in the Quran. When you hear people engage in that which displeases Allah, get up and walk away. I've had brothers and sisters tell me that it's so difficult to get up and walk away. You know, everyone's having a chat. 
When you get together on a Saturday afternoon for tea, what are you talking about? All the other sisters who are not at the tea. Right? In such a way that the day you're not at the tea, you can imagine what they're talking about, can't you? So the difficulty is for you, in order to stop that, you need to get up and tell the sisters, listen, it's an instruction of my maker. I love you guys, all of you. But the speech that's there right now, I can't take it because it's against what Allah says. You're hurting someone, you're talking bad about them, about them behind their back. I'm sorry, I've got to go. And you go. You do it once or twice. Your gatherings will be free of speaking about others. My mother in my own home, and I'm giving you this example. My father tells my mother, when you go and visit your friends, do not sit for longer than 15 minutes. So my mother says, and why? She says, because the 16th minute, he says, the 16th minute, you start talking about Maryam and Fatima and Safiya and everybody else. But for 15 minutes, how are you? Everything okay? What's happening? How's things going? How's the children? Oh, mashallah, your child, child's at school. Oh, alhamdulillah, how are you coping? How was the cooking? What did you make today? Do you have a little bit of it left? Let's taste it and so on. Mashallah, that's good. <laughs> everything happens. The 16th minute, you've got nothing more to say. So what do you do? You say, you know, that sister there, be, watch out, be careful. You know, she's dangerous. She's poisonous. You know, she did this, this. That's backbiting. Forget about it. Cut it. However, there is one exception. The Quran says, La yuhibbullahu al jahra bisu'i min al qawli illa man zulim. Allah does not like a person to make manifest evil about someone unless they themselves have been oppressed and they're seeking justice. I've had people who have been abused and they are reaching out for guidance and they say, I can't tell you what's happened because it's backbiting. You've been abused. You're, sometimes you've been oppressed. Your wealth has been usurped. You need to report. You need to seek help. You need to tell people this is what happened. So that is not considered backbiting. When it happened to you directly, someone oppressed me. I can warn the brothers to say, listen, my experience with this guy was X, Y, and Z. I have two intentions. One is to seek justice and the other is to warn the brothers and sisters to say, listen, be warned. I've already been bitten. Don't be bitten again. So that is the exception. You are allowed to do that. It's not considered backbiting, but the intention needs to be one of the two. Either I'm seeking justice or I am respectfully warning others. They shouldn't be bitten from the same hole. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and understanding. Definitely this Islam is actually quite complete. It is fully complete. We sometimes don't know much, so we keep on learning. Uh, don't think for a moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not instructed us to clarify our name, you know, to, 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 or to clarify the names of our friends. It's wrong for us to sit back and relax when we know that a friend of ours is being spoken about in a dirty and a bad way. We're sitting there, we haven't said anything. It's your duty. Get up and say something. Wallahu alam. I hope that helped.